I'm Joni Petrie and welcome to the University of Vedic Astrology. Today's class is going to be on the seventh house, which is of great interest to everyone out there because it's all about relationships. We are all in relationship with others, but let me define what the seventh house really is in terms of relationships. It's not just a relationship with your friends or with your parents or with anyone. It deals with relationships that are contractual, that you have a contractual, contractual agreement with others. So you have expectations with the seventh house and it is our marriage partner. It can be serious relationships where we are living together, but that we have a commitment to one another. Not necessarily is it always you, you must be married, but it's something about a commitment. Because remember, it deals with contracts. Likewise, it can deal with business partnerships because it is actually a house for business as well, for career. Why? It's the 10th house from the 10th house. So it's another house that deals with business in our career. So with this being relationships that have agreements or expectations attack, attached to them, let's talk a little deeper about what this can mean if you have certain planets in your seventh house and the seventh house remember it's not just if you have planets in this house it's the planet that rules this house and what house that planet goes to that can reflect what your relationships will be like if you have the ruler of the seventh and the eighth that's not so good for relationships. There's going to be problems. But I want to talk more about specifically in this class, just planets being placed in your seventh house of relationships. Remember the seventh house is seventh from the first. So it's a reflection of who you are. That's what relationships are all about. If you don't have a high self-esteem of yourself, you're going to attract someone that reflects how you feel about yourself. So low self-esteem can sometimes reflect and attract um, bad relationships because they're going to reflect exactly what you feel about yourself. So let's talk first about the sun being in the seventh house. Remember when the sun is in a particular house, and it, that house rules a person, such as the seventh house rules marriage partners, this can be a problem for the marriage partner. They can be overbearing. They can shine too bright. Remember the sun, we can't even look at it during the day. It's just too powerful. It hurts our eyes. So you put this in the seventh house, that's what the marriage partner is about. They have to shine so brightly, they have to be the center of attention. You gotta stand back and let them be. And if that bothers you, this is gonna be a problem. You love powerful people to be involved with in your one-on-one -on -one relationships. That's the sun. So the sun generally in the seventh house is not a great placement for marriage, but it can mean a very powerful, strong partner. Some, a partner with a strong ego, I might add too. If you have the moon in the seventh house, you fluctuate and change all the time. You know, the feelings, your partner changes. So the seventh house can reflect you, but it's also going to be indicate, indicative of your partner. So it can be somebody who's fickle that you bring into your life, somebody that's changeable, not so, balanced in their emotional being. It's always changing. They're always changing. Your relationships can change a lot. So the moon is, is indicative of fluctuations in change in the seventh house. This can be around the personality of the partners or relationships. If you have Mercury in the seventh house, this means you have to communicate with your partner. It's so vitally important that you have a good communication, that you can talk, that you understand each other, your minds connect, your thoughts, your feelings, but specifically how you think and how you talk to each other is imperative 
if you have Mercury in the seventh house. You'll have a very intelligent and smart partner. If Venus is in the seventh house, this is too much love energy in the seventh house. Venus is, is the principle of love. And they say when Venus is in the seventh house, it's not so good for marriage because it makes a very attractive partner. Therefore, others are attracted to your partner. This can cause jealousy. This can cause some problems. But it can represent a very artistic, very good looking partner, Venus in the seventh house. If you have Mars in the seventh house, this is Kuja Dosha. They say this is not good for marriage relationship. Mars is a planet of war. You don't want it in the house where you have to coexist. You have to find balance. You have to cooperate. Mars in the seventh is going to make someone that's not very cooperative, that is in a impulsive, fighting, argumentative uh, way. So this is Mars in the seventh house. It's not good for marriage and relationships. Unless you're married to a athlete, because Mars is muscles and strong, but once again, it's problematic. If you have Saturn in the seventh house, sometimes this means you can stay married for long periods of time. Saturn goes for the duration, but Saturn in the seventh house sometimes means you stay in a relationship way past its due date. So take my word, Saturn in the seventh house can go either way. Saturn does get dig bala in the seventh house. It's strong in the seventh house. So sometimes when Saturn's in the seventh house, you may be attracted to someone that's older, more mature, someone that can take care of you. Someone that represents security. So that's Saturn in the seventh house. Mercury in the seventh, so I failed to mention, can be a partner that's younger and someone that has a great, great sense of humor. You love your partner to have a great sense of humor. Be funny, Mercury in the seventh. If you have Jupiter in the seventh house, this can be a very philosophical type partner, someone who's a teacher, someone who's wise, someone who is very prosperous, optimistic and happy, and this can, or it can be someone that's excessive. Put Rahu there in the seventh house, and you could be attracted to someone that has addictions over the top in some way. Maybe they're very successful, but they're excessive in some way. Rahu can also represent foreigners and Saturn can represent foreigners at the same time. So Saturn Rahu would represent marriage to a foreigner, someone of another culture. Um, you put K2 in the seventh house. You always feel like you've got to take care of your partner. What can I do to take care of them? Therefore, you usually attract those that need to be taken care of. The underdog, somebody that needs more attention, somebody that's got problems. Don't be drawn to somebody that you feel the need to take care of because chances are with K2 in the seventh house, you always feel like you need to take care of somebody. So you attract those that have the most problems so you can be their caretaker. They, they, they become victims. K2 can be the victimhood type scenario in relationships. So be very careful with K2 in the seventh house. Of course, it can be a very spiritual partner, but generally the likelihood is they are underdogs, outcasts in society, and K2 in the seventh house means your partner can have very light colored eyes. Or if they have brown eyes, which, which most people do, it can mean that their eyes are very, very interesting and are the first thing you notice about that person. If you have the outer planet Uranus in the seventh house, it means your partner travels a lot. They're not around. They're disconnected. Or they're unique and unusual. There's something very um, unconventional about them. If you have Neptune in the seventh house, your partner may be dishonest, maybe not be truthful, or they can be a mystic, a spiritualist. But generally, 
It can be someone who is not clear with their communications. So therefore, there are a lot of misunderstandings with Neptune in the seventh house. Pluto in the seventh house, a controlling partner. Be wary of this. You, you are doing everything in your power to not be controlled and somehow you attract that what you most feared and didn't want in your life. So be aware of that. So I think I have covered all of the planets in the houses. If you need more information, you can always go to my website, which is galacticcenter.org. And if you're interested in learning Vedic astrology, seriously learning Vedic astrology, go to my university, universityofvedicastrology.com. Thank you.